All right, one more way to go, and this is this Strecker synthesis. So in this case, we're going to start off with our R group already present as an aldehyde. Um, what we're going to do that is at what we're going to do next is add some ammonium chloride, so NH4Cl. Um, this is just a way to insert NH3 into the solution. So if you take a look at the mechanism in the work along, you'll see just NH3. This is the NH3 source, right? Ammonium chloride is in equilibrium with ammonia, so we have ammonia in the solution. And then we add some sodium cyanide. Um, in terms of the mechanism, you can see a more detailed version in the work along, but overall, the first step, we're going to form the imine. So our uh, ammonia, our NH3, is going to attack our uh, aldehyde and form an imine. And then once you've got an imine, you're going to attack that with your nucleophilic cyanide. And so then your intermediate here, right? Now we've attached our amine to it, right? And this carbon right here came from a cyanide. Remember when we add the cyanide, we extend our chain by one carbon because we added a carbon. And then we just add some H3O plus. And what that's going to do is it's just gonna hydrolyze the cyanide. Right, so we're gonna go from a cyano group into a carboxylic acid. Again, if you think about your product, boom, we're back to an amino acid. Amine, acid, R group, right? The three components of an amino acid. And so again, here, what do you have at the beginning? We have the R group already, right? It's just hidden as an aldehyde. And then um, what we're adding is the carboxylic acid, right? Through that cyanide that then gets hydrolyzed and the amine. Of course, this reaction, just like all the other ones I've showed you, um, we're going to get a racemic mixture, right? So we're going to both get the R and the S version. Um, what if you only wanted one enantiomer? Could you make just one enantiomer? And the answer is yes, you definitely can. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a very interesting uh, part of organic chemistry, but it's beyond the scope of this class. So I'm just going to copy this from the book. Uh, I think they go a little too hard on it, but it's just my opinion. Um, so you can have this compound right here. And what we're going to do is a hydrogenation, right? So we're going to add H's. Um, remember that this is a syn addition, so we can add either both H's as both wedges or both dashes. But if you just do like something like platinum, um, you're going to get a mixture of both, and then you get a mixture of both enantiomers. So what you do is you use a chiral catalyst. In this case, this is this ruthenium um, complex, and you can see that this is kind of like a wedge back here, and that's a wedge back here. And so what this does is the, the catalyst is chiral, so it'll um, create a chiral environment, and then it'll selectively add the H's to one face of the molecule. In this case, right, it, what it's going to add is both wedges. And then that way you only end up with one enantiomer. And you can see 99% enantiomeric excess. And go ahead and review um, the other chemistry so you can remind, that, remind yourself what that means. And then you end up with your um, enantiomerically relatively pure amino acid. But again, that's beyond the scope of this course, so we won't go into it any further than that.